Now that we've got everything done that we need to do while the steel is soft, we're gonna harden the blade and turn it into an actual knife. Um, there's a few numbers that we need to remember. Uh, those are 1800 degrees, uh, 1600 degrees, and 1500 degrees. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is normalize this and that's basically gonna uh, like reset the structure um, of the steel. And to do that, we need to heat it to 1800 degrees, which is uh, color wise, it's a uh, like an orangish yellow color. Um, remove it from the forge, uh, let it go down to black, and then heat it back up to 1600 degrees, which is uh, like a dull orange, I guess, um, would be a good description. Um, and then after we do that, we need to do the same thing by taking it down to black, um, let it let it cool to black, and then we're gonna put it back in the forge and heat it to 1500 degrees, which is a, a, a red, bright red, um, and then we're gonna put it in the oil. When I heat up the blade in the forge, I'm gonna use this piece of uh, a rectangular tube. Uh, I believe this one's two inches by four inches, but you can use whatever size you need to, to fit this inside the forge and then the blade inside of this. Uh, what this will do is it'll keep the blade out of direct heat, so it'll give it a, a more even heat. Here I've got two pieces of angle iron, and what I use these for is when I pull the blade out of the quench. Um, usually if it doesn't pull a warp I won't worry about this but if it starts warping I'll clamp the blade down in between these in my vise and let it cool and then 90% of the time the warp comes out with no problem. So here's where I place the baffle. Um, I don't want to put it directly into the burners so I kind of shift it over to the to the right a little bit. I also use a thermocouple uh, just to keep an eye on the heat. Um, if it's getting way too hot, then I'll just uh, turn it down a little bit. Um, in the end, I just use my eye to judge the color. Uh, I think it's usually pretty close to the temperature I want it at. Over here at my quench tank, I've got this piece of steel that I use. Um, while the forge is heating up, I will heat that piece of steel up. Uh, right here, and then once it gets hot, I'll dunk it in the oil um, so that I can warm the, the oil up. And I've got a little temperature or thermometer um, inside the oil, so I could try to get it up to like 100, 120 degrees, and that's good for the, the steel I'm working with. All right, so we're about 1500 degrees in the forge inside of the baffle. Um, we're going to heat up our oil. And I'm just going to let that steel sit in there for a little while. Alright, we're going to slide our blade in here and first temperature we're after is 1800 degrees. I'm thinking we're pretty close to uh, 1800 degrees now. So let's pull this out. That's pretty close. So now we want to let this cool down to black. Um, so out in the light, it's not really easy to see the color change. We come over here where it's a little bit dark. There, you can see that it's still red. So we gotta let it keep cooling. And we'll keep checking it. As soon as it's black, we'll put it back in the forge and get it up to 1600 degrees. Should be pretty close to 16. Should be a reddish orange color when it comes out. 
So we'll do the same thing, let this cool down to black and then put it back in for 1500 degrees, which is our quenching temperature. As we're getting ready for quench, you want to check your oil temperature. As you can see, it's cooled down to pretty close to where we want it to be. Um, and when you quench, when you put the blade in the oil, you want to you don't want to like swish it around. You want to put it straight down and you can move it up and down um, or blade to spine, but you don't want to go side to side because that actually could warp it. Um, so just up and down or spine to edge. So we should be pretty much where we want to be about 1500 degrees. So once you're, once you're sure you're at about your quench temperature, we're gonna pull it from the forge, give it a dunk in the oil. As you can see, no big stupid fireball. That's just bad for your oil, it's bad for everything. You wanna leave it in here about seven to 10 seconds pull it out you can see all this uh, all the scaly crap all over your knife that's actually a good indication that you got a nice quench so just wipe all the oil off you want to check for warps it's actually looking like it stand nice and straight for us so if you get a good if you get a good normalization uh, reset the grain structure and all that you'll usually come out with a nice straight blade Let's do everything right. You should be good to go If you do have a warp you have until about 400 degrees until you really can't work it anymore um, And if your warp doesn't come out after that you can always pull it out in the temper um, I just have a little jig with um, like C clamps and stuff that I'll put on it to bend the warp in the opposite direction when I'm tempering it. I wanted to show you my process. Um, if I do have a warp, if I pulled this out and I saw it start bowing one direction or another, uh, what I would do is I'd come over here to the angle iron set up in the vise. And then I would put it in here like this and then just crank it as tight as I could and then just leave it there until it cools. That should pull the warp out. For tempering, um, I've got this little PID temperature device that I've made um, to help control the temperature of my toaster oven. Um, so toaster ovens on their own aren't very accurate. You could be 25 degrees above, 25 degrees below, and your dial will say otherwise. So this PID, um, they're super easy to make, tons of resources on the internet. Um, but I've got mine set at 400 degrees, since this is a smaller knife. If it was bigger, I'd probably do it at 425. Um, if this was cutlery, a kitchen knife, I'd do it around 380, 390. Um, sometimes lower if you're giving it to somebody who knows how to use a knife. Um, anyway, this is all heated up. So the knife that I just uh, uh, quenched, we'll throw in here. And we're gonna wanna do two tempers of two hours each. Um, if you're trying to pull a warp out of the blade in the temper, I would recommend tempering it um, one cycle, the first two hours, then after you've tempered it for that two hours, then you can put it in the jig and try to pull the warp out on the second um, temper cycle. If you try to do it on the first, uh, as we know, the blades are brittle and you could break it just trying to straighten it out. So 
recommend it on the second one. So we're gonna set our timer for two hours and then come back, pull it out, let it cool to room temperature, put it back in, and then after the second one, the, 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 the uh, heat treat process will be complete. It's been two hours, so the first temper cycle is complete. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that before you put it in the temper, you'll want to uh, run an edge on the grinder or use a file and scuff it up a little bit to expose the silver steel. That way you can get a color from the temper and that's a good indication of the temperature that you're, you're trying to temper at. Um, so for 400 degrees, this is the correct color, the straw color. Once this cools down to room temperature, I'm going to put it back in the toaster oven for another two hour cycle. And then once it's, once it's gone through the two hours, then the heat treat will be complete.